Okay, our next speaker. I'm not going to spend too much time introducing because her talk is just amazingly visual and beautiful. Um, it's about pictures and portraits. And she's going to give you a, a little bit of the history behind check, portrait check, photography. Check, one, and two, check, check. I'm just going to let you describe it because it's amazing. So without further ado, check, the one, thirst two, for, check. what do I have up here? Portraits. Let's give it up for Shannon. Green button go. Thank you so much. So I've got 45 slides and eight minutes. And one of the things that Chris, uh, I'm sorry, Eric told me was I didn't have to tell you the answer. So what I have for you is a lot of questions. So um, I have a three part presentation. First part is questions, second part is artifacts, and third part is about an experiment American history is doing. So just to remind you, I'm at the National Museum of American History as opposed to natural history. <laughs> Which way do I go forward? There we go. All right, so we're pushing some boundaries here. And that's what I'm hoping we're going to do here, right? That's what DC Thirst likes, is to challenge yourselves. So we're challenging ourselves at the National Museum of American History, specifically in the Photographic History Collection, to think of portraiture in a wide variety of ways. So we have this ex exhibition that I'm doing that's going to open in the summer. July 2nd is its official date. And it's called Pushing Boundaries Portraits by Robert Weingarten. And this particular photograph and this particular uh, photographer prompts us to ask a lot of questions. And even the basic question of what is a portrait. Can you imagine your favorite portrait? What do you think a portrait is? Hold that in your mind. It's probably something like this, right? Formal, stiff, gone to a photographer. You think it's a representation of somebody you know. It's a likeness. It's about individuality. Well, then you could just have a mugshot, right? There you go. It's, it, this even gives you some data. Your height, your weight, color of your hair. But really what it's about is individuality. It's about where the wrinkles lie on your face. It's about how you dress yourself. It's about how you adorn yourself with ink and other things, your moles, your scars. But if it, portraiture is about individuality, can you actually suppress the individual in order to create a portrait that represents a whole? Here's Gertrude Kaysevier's 1903 picture of the red man. Here he stands for all of the romance of the American Indian. Or how about poor Florence Thompson, whose name was not known for 35 years. We've known her as the migrant mother. She still persists a lot in our culture. But she stands for all those migrant workers of the Dust Bowl era. Who decides what a portrait should look like? Is it your mommy? You see all the mommies that are propping up their babies there? Is it the photographer? Or is it the sitter? What's that balance? Who gets to say? <laughs> or maybe it's actually your record company who's trying to put you on the cover of Modern Screen Magazine. So this is a mock-up for the cover of uh, that said magazine with old blue eyes here. Or maybe it's actually Pabst Beer Company. So here's Edward G. Robinson. He's in his home. This is his artwork. This could be a portrait of him, but maybe it's not. Does a portrait have to be flattering? Right? How many of you want to delete those pictures, put on filters? You do? OK, you don't need it, Kelly. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Can we get to something that's beyond our surface? I put, this is who? Eric, I put this one in for you. Linus Pauling. There's your crazy wide-eyed scientist. Can we get beneath the skin? Can you get into somebody's head? What is it that they want to project about themselves? Can you take the inside and put it on the outside? One of the ways that people do that to tell you about who they are is their objects. Sometimes photographers include them to let you know something about Waylon Jennings in 1972. If objects are important, then can something stand in for you so that you don't have to be there? This is Flannery O'Connor's 
uh, space. You can see she's a writer, lived in a modest home. She had an ailment in which she used crutches. When you bring those objects into the museum, we call them artifacts. If you take them over to natural history, they're called specimens. <laughs> Photography we love because it gives us lots of information, but there are also, of course, in American history, other kinds of objects. We have big ones and we have tiny ones. We have sexy ones and we have strange ones. And we have some that are iconic. But all of these objects tell stories and all of these objects intersect between the personal story and the national story, small stories and big stories. Further back? All right, so here's our experiment. You don't think of a, a, a history museums conducting experiments. So Robert Weingarten is the photographer of that first photograph that I showed you. I'm so sorry about the feedback. His experiment is that he went to iconic Americans and said, what makes you who you are? And what they did was they sent him lists. And he photographed these objects on the list and he put them together in a digital composite. We're going to show these at the International Gallery this summer, and these are 60 by 90 prints. So what you have is not just the objects, but you have the encapsulation of a lifetime of achievement in a single photograph. So here's a question. Where's the line between portraiture and biography? Here's Buzz Aldrin. Here's Chuck Close, somebody who certainly knows a lot about portraiture. And Sandra Day O'Connor. One of the interesting things it seems to me that's on Sandra Day O'Connor's list is the sound of windmills at the Lazy Bee Ranch. How do you visually depict sound? We are, of course, multifaceted people. This is the same individual on both sides, seen in multiple ways, in the magic of mirrors. So we bring our objects to our photographs. What happens when we combine the, the objects and these multiple facets. And then this last question at American history, because of course we represent a lot of dead people, does the person have to be alive to be represented? So, what are we gonna do? We're going to work with Robert Weingarten to create a portrait of a historical figure. And here's where we need your help. And we need your help twice. The first time, is that you get to help select who that historical figure is going to be. So starting on May 7th, we're going to roll out a series of blogs to tell you about our five historic figures. I'm not going to tell you who they are. You have to visit our website. And after you've read all five, then you get to vote. And that voting will last between the 11th and 25th of May. And on the 25th, we're going to tell you who that person is, but here's the really interesting part. You get to tell us what you know about that historical figure. And we're going to match what you've told us against the historical record. That's going to be interesting. And then we're going to use the objects from our collection and let the photographer photograph some of them and go back to California and create a historic portrait. And that historic portrait, the, figure, the portrait of a historical figure that you've helped create, will go on view sometime in the fall. So that's our experiment at American History, and we hope you're going to help us out. So thanks so much. Awesome. Did I do it in eight minutes? Any, any, that was perfect. Any questions? Any questions? Yes. So. I don't have a, well, I have a question to add to the series of questions that you have. It's not necessarily a question for you. Okay. Um, what I would add is um, whether, the, whether it needs to be real, the whole Photoshop phenomenon. The, the, one of the images popped into my head was a Sarah Palin uh, picture of her in a bikini and carrying a shotgun. And it was very popular right around uh, the last election. And it was immediately revealed to be not true, but so many people saw it as iconic of who she represented. Um, is that within uh, the context of the year? It was like um, creations, um, you know, well, fabrications. Well, the, um, 
theoretically, that would be within our scope of collecting to consider what it is that within the history of photography, the history of combination printing, politics, the way that people perceive images. Um, the faked image is not part of this particular exhibition necessarily, uh, but the question about combination printing is, and we certainly need to, I think that we're jaded enough cultured now that when we see those images, hopefully soon we will be questioning them. I love it. She looked at me when she said jaded, by the way. <laughs> this tall ass chin. It's an aura you have. <laughs> uh, one more quick question. Someone had a quick question, Shannon. She gets a drink now. That's fantastic. Thank you Give so much. Up.